um, at this time. Thank you, Mr. Councilman. Um, okay. Here we go. Um, I thank you, uh, Mr. Council President, for this time. I would just respectfully remind the members of Council that questions that uh, pertain to matters that are the subject of pending or imminent litigation can have serious implications on the county's legal posture in and ability to defend against that litigation. Uh, I would respectfully but strongly encourage that any such questions that the council members may have be reserved for a future executive session, at which time th uh, those subjects of pending and or imminent litigation can be fully reviewed with the members of council without compromising the county's ability to defend itself in court proceedings. Thank right. you. Thank you, Mr. Hannon. Thank you for being here. Um, we also have Brendan Doyle, who's uh, new to us, but uh, uh, actually quite experienced in the last two weeks. Um, he uh, is our special counsel that uh, you're all getting to know, and we appreciate his hard work on this, uh, setting up this meeting. Uh, we also have um, Richard Blake, the uh, attorney for uh, Sheriff Pinckney. Um, thanks for being here, and uh, the Sheriff Pinckney Thank you also for being here. We appreciate your attendance. Um, and um, um, as I had uh, previously stated to some of you in my communication, because of the uniqueness and the importance of today's meeting, and because I'm sure everyone has good questions and they want answers to, it's important that we proceed in an orderly and organized and respectful manner. I believe this will be the best way for us to get questions to our answers. Um, while we will ask many questions today, uh, as we can, uh, there may be some questions that we're not able to get answers to this afternoon or may not be appropriate for discussion due to pending litigation. And for um, that reason, I am considering um, going into uh, executive session at a later date. We'll be conferring with council members to uh, see what their uh, input is on that matter. Um, and to council members who have, may have a longer list of questions than others, uh, let's please uh, respect the time factor and give our colleagues a chance to uh, get their questions in. We'll promise we will come back to any of you who have further questions. Um, and uh, additionally, um, obviously the county prosecutor's office has worked closely with us in advance of this meeting today. And uh, I would also like to ask the council to respect the legal counsel that they are providing for us today. Um, and with that, um, I guess we'll bring up uh, Sheriff uh, Pinckney and Attorney Richard Blake. Now, as always, council members uh, should signal me, uh, make sure you get my eye. I can't see and I don't, you know, I can't see all the way around. Uh, but, I'll, but I'm sure we'll all, we'll all have an opportunity. Um, I would like to uh, begin uh, by uh, simply asking the sheriff uh, or having the, the sheriff tell, tell us all, uh, those who have been here and those who haven't been here who are maybe attending the room or attending this meeting or listening to it or watching it. Um, um, uh, sheriff, uh, when were you appointed as the county sheriff? In March of 2015. March of 2015, so almost uh, four and a half years as county sheriff, yes. and uh, that's uh, basically the entire tenure of the um, of the present administration. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask you uh, uh, a, a, a few questions myself before I go to uh, some of my colleagues. Um, recently, the state of Ohio announced that it would be increasing the frequency of its inspections of the county jail to every 30 days. I was wondering if you have any thoughts on this decision by the state of Ohio? No, I don't, I don't care. I, it, it could be a good thing. Okay. What has been, over your tenure, the relationship between the county sheriff and the state? I believe it's been a good um, relationship, a, a very professional relationship. Okay. Uh, on a s different matter, um, how do you believe that the transition to Metro Health for complete medical care has gone so far? So far, I believe it's going pretty good. I haven't heard any uh, issues or any complaints. I just spoke with the new jail administrator yesterday, and she said that um, their relationship is pretty good. And um, so is there, is there any particular areas you've seen um, improvement in? 
I think it's too early to tell right now. Okay. All right. Um, are there any uh, other issues uh, around uh, uh, working with Metro, like space or communication, um, um, that that you would, you'd like to speak to? I think the space uh, it could be an issue, but that nothing we can do about it because that's what we have at the Justice Center, and uh, the communication I think is one of those issues that's fluid. Um, but but it's it's a good uh, communication so far, but it can always improve. All right, all right. Well, I know we've all been through a lot in, in terms of that issue um, over the last four and a half years, really. And so that brings me to my final question. At this point, I reserve the <clears throat> opportunity to come back. Um, are you aware of any um, staffing? Uh, requests for staffing increases or additional appropriations in the medical unit um, that were requested by the sheriff's office but not ultimately approved by the administration since your tenure in 2015. Again, are you aware of any requests for staffing increases or additional appropriations in the medical unit that were requested by your office but not ultimately approved by the administration? Yes. Um, I believe it was in 2018 or 2017, there was a request for additional nurses that uh, I approved, and then it was ultimately uh, denied by the previous uh, jail director, and we addressed that, and we ended up eventually hiring more nurses. All right, how long did it take you to resolve that? I don't remember. Can't remember. And just so everybody else knows, who are you talking about in terms of the jail administrator? The previous jail administrator was yeah. uh, Ken Mills. Ken Mills. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, now I'm going to go to uh, uh, Pernell Jones and then Jack Schron. Uh, Jack has a. I know. He has a limited amount of time, and I'd like to make sure we get him in. So, Councilman Jones. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, a few years ago, the county expanded the use of, an, of the ankle bracelet program. Uh, the intention of this program was for pretrial. How many spots do we have available for the ankle bracelet program? So we have a, currently 330 bracelets. Out of that 330, I, I wrote it down yet, 183 units are used for pretrial right now, and 147 are being used for the probation department. So all 330. Uh, bracelets are being currently being used right now. Would you recommend increasing the number of bracelets? Increasing the number of bracelets would uh, cause for us to have to increase the deputy um, population uh, because we need someone to monitor those bracelets. Okay. How many inmates are in the county jail awaiting trial? Right now, we have approximately over 1,400 inmates awaiting trial, and the average days those uh, inmates that are awaiting trial spend in the Justice Center jail are 99 days. What do you think the county can do to help with the overcrowding issue? That's kind of a, I, I don't know if I can accurately uh, answer that question. Um, there's things that we could do. We could probably utilize those GPS units a little bit better uh, for more pretrial. Um, maybe open up some facilities for the folks that are in custody with mental illness or addictions, things of that nature. You said mental health and addiction. Yes, sir. In, any recommendations towards dealing with the mental health component? The, the mental health, we have a lot of folks in custody that have mental illness and um, we don't have the appropriate resources to deal with those folks in, in a correctional facility. They should be in a facility that specialize and identify with folks with mental illness as well as folks with addictions. What is the number of, in your estimation that have the mental health, have mental health issues? I, I couldn't give you an estimate, okay. um, but it's quite a bit. Couldn't even give a rough, wouldn't hold you to it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I really couldn't give a, a, an accurate guess. 
uh, to be to be honest, but it's quite a bit. Who would we go to get to get that number? I could try to get that number for you. I would, what I would do, I would get with the uh, current jail administrator as well as uh, one of the associate wardens to see if they could kind of uh, get that number for you. Okay, I like that number. Okay. And last, uh, given the county jail has been consistently over capacity to varying levels for years, is there an inmate population level at which you would refuse to accept more prisoners? Um, to my knowledge, I cannot refuse folks coming into the facility. It is by law. By law. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. President. We are aware um, that uh, Ken Mills and his experience in regards to running jails at the time that he was hired for that position. Um, what, are we aware of the fact that he did not have experience running a jail? Yes. Okay. Who made the final decision to put him into that position and to hire him? I, I don't know. It was not me. You're telling this body that you have no idea who actually made the final decision? Yes. You, if you're going to surmise, can you surmise as to who made, might have made that decision? I can, I can answer it this way by saying that the, uh, my understanding that the executive and HR are the hiring authority or appointing authority. Okay. So then... Based on that, is it logical that all the other hirings would have been approved by that same executive? Yes. Okay. Assuming that that decision, and you were aware of who made that at the time, did you make any objections orally or in writing to uh, Mr. Mills being in this position to that hiring body? At that time, no, I did not. Have you made objections written or orally to the hiring of Mr. Mills in that position before he was uh, suspended? Yes. And to whom did you make those? I had discussions with um, the chief protective officer, I believe it was a title at the time, which was Frank Bova, who was over me. I also made ob uh, objections and recommendations to the previous chief of staff, which was Sharon Sobel Jordan. I also spoke with um, Douglas Dykes, the HR director. Um, and as this council knows, also made um, recommendations to some council members. I spoke with council members about uh, my dissatisfaction with Ken Mills. Any of those in writing? No. So you were dissatisfied, but you never put in an email, a note, a memo, a written memorandum, or anything of that nature with the level of dissatisfaction you had about this, this person running the jail system? No, I did not. Why? I had conversations, like I said, um, and I, I felt that if I had the conversations with the folks that are above me, that that would suffice. Um, I asked the HR director or chief of talent officer to... Uh, join us in staff meeting so he can see what I was saying and he uh, obliged me with those requests so he attended a few staff meetings and um, by me verbally expressing myself I thought that was sufficient. Okay, uh, the creation of a regional jail or moving the, uh, the people over from the Cleveland City Jail, is this a big, big change in policy and program to bring all those people in? Yes. Okay, so if this is a big program, uh, what business models were used uh, to uh, bring this massive change over so we had a, a county record of what was established in regards to uh, jail service personnel, food service personnel, uh, medical personnel? What, what were the business models that would have been used to do the analytics on this? Uh, I can't answer that question. I had no dealings with that uh, transition. So you had, there was nothing to do with any of these uh, head counts or any of the individuals or any of the responsibility? That's correct. And you had nothing, you never, never reviewed or looked at anything that maybe somebody else would have done? That's correct. So to my recollection, I have seen nothing. I know conversations were being held, um, but I 
didn't take you know, part in any of those conversations. Okay, would it have been logical for a change of this nature for the administration to have created a written record of all these topics of how many people you would need and how many medical service personnel to take care of the in influx of a new additional individuals coming in? Yes. Okay, so it's logical that that would have been done. You never saw it in your position as sheriff and you never had a chance to review it. Correct. Okay, then let's move to the, the, the service sector of this. Um, were you aware of any written records or documentation or business models or anything of that nature that would have been created as to the supplies and service and the, and the bedding and the sheets and the, and the food and medical service support uh, equipment that would have been needed to support all these additional individuals coming in? Were you aware of any of that? I believe that was taking place, but I don't recall seeing any of it. Do you know if a written record was ever created for any of that, of, of any of the supplies and service uh, aspects of this to bring forth this massive change? I believe it was done, but I, again, I did not see anything. You were never asked to review and say, is, are these numbers correct? Or this, does this look right uh, from your position? Correct. I was not asked. Would both of these areas, the personnel needs and the service and supply needs, been something that traditionally would have been something done uh, or would have gone through the sheriff's office in the other 87 counties should this same type of thing taken place? Normally, yes. Under the, uh, if the sheriff was elected, that's the normal process. Does the responsibility change whether or not you were elected or not elected to, to review these type of things? It shouldn't change. So the obligations that I just listed off of of a massive change of this nature is not going to change whether or not you are an elected or non-elected personnel? Is that what you're suggesting? I'm suggesting that it shouldn't change. Okay. And yes. in this particular case, did it change? Yes, I did not see uh -huh, any of those documents that you spoke of. Okay. And we don't, we don't even know, do we even know that those documents even exist? I believe, I believe they did exist. And where would they, and they exist? Where would they be stored right now? I, I don't know. Okay, and you haven't seen them subsequent uh, to, to this time uh, uh, in regards to that. Um, do you know who made the final decision to regionalize and move the personnel, the individuals over from the Cleveland jail system? No, I don't. Who do you believe made that? I, I couldn't, couldn't tell you. I don't know. Okay, let's go back to the surmise. Who would you surmise would have made the ultimate decision to make this this big change? I would suggest that um, by the structure, it would go up to the executive's office. Okay, so the only way we're gonna get an answer to who hired Mr. Mills and who made this decision to run this jail system, in your opinion, is to go a chair way above yours and have that person sit there and answer these exact same questions. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Schron. Next, we have Councilwoman Simon. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Sheriff, for being here. Um, question about work-related conferences that you've attended. How many have you attended since you were appointed as a sheriff, would you say? Conferences? Conferences related to your employment as a sheriff. Six or seven. And at those conferences, were you able to learn about any best practices that you thought would be useful here in Cuyahoga County? Yes. Okay, what, what best practices would you say that would be helpful here that you learned about at these conferences? Um, recommendations on uh, trying to readjust the staffing levels. Um, better usage of uh, uh, the, the personnel we have in place, uh, training, uh, the training that we offer or ones that we didn't know about, um, different awareness programs that uh, we either didn't know about or just never took advantage of, things like that. Thank you. Were you able to come back here and implement any of these programs or best practices? Yeah, yes, some, some we took advantage of. Okay. Yes. Okay. And which ones do you recall taking advantage of? 
um, just like manipulating our, our manpower uh, uh, shift, taking better advantage of the uh, shifts that we use our manpower for, things of that nature. Some of the training that was uh, recommended or suggested. Did you um, actually get recognized for any of these programs while you were at conferences, or did you present at conferences while you were there about what we were doing here that might be recognized as a good practice? I'm sure, but I can't remember. Okay. Yeah. Um, question about the um, do the explosive dog. Have you did? It's my understanding that it would be useful to have a dog, an explosive dog, that would be able to sniff out bombs. Were you able to try to work on that effort to bring such a dog here? We 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 had a uh, a, a canine that um, checked for explosives, and um, we had to take that dog out of service because uh, it was more of the handler as opposed to the, the canine. And uh, I think we're looking to get another uh, canine to check for explosives, but we had one during the RNC and other big events like that. Is that something you could follow up with before you leave um, yes, we, your we, position uh, to see that that's in place and yes, we would have the funding? Yes, we're already moving forward with that. Okay, so I'll circle back with you on that one. I have a question on the, the Euclid Jail, and in your opinion, how that's been working and working out as it relates to population being diverted to Euclid and how, that, how you see that operation going. I don't think, in, in my opinion, I don't think, uh, let, me, let me start off by saying this, the Euclid uh, Jail, uh, came well before I was a sheriff. So that contract and all that happened way before I became a sheriff. And um, I don't think we really uh, were able to use that facility um, to its full cap capabilities. Um, we, we were never able to, um, for whatever reason, put enough inmates out there. We have it staffed with the appropriate medical personnel now and correctional staff, but we were never able to put their, you know, enough inmates out there. Okay. Have you considered other uses for the Euclid facility in terms of maybe some rehab or addiction, mental health um, processes that could occur there if we can't maintain a full-flown jail? Uh, I have not. Okay. Um, in terms of your leaving the office, have, had you considered resigning or leaving the post prior to your end date? And any other time, had you considered resigning? No. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, Councilwoman Yvonne Carwell. Um, thank you to the chair, to the sheriff. Um, My question is about red, red zoning. Um, do you currently track the, the jail's use of red zoning? And if so, when did you start tracking the da this data? Yes, we currently are tracking it now. I do not have a date when we started uh, tracking that, but I believe it was sometime either the beginning of this year or uh, the end of last year. So red zoning was going on um, in 2015? Red zoning has been going on well before I became the sheriff. Okay. But since 2015, have you noticed an increase or a decrease or the same amount of red zoning? I, I can't answer that since 2015 because I never, it, it was never an issue. It was never brought to my attention. Um, but recently, uh, since we started tracking it, um, I, I think it's, and, and I might not be the appropriate person to answer this question, but I believe it's about the same. Um, I think the, some of the causes of having to red zone is the uh, overcrowdedness, as well as uh, lack of staff, and at times some high call-offs. Would you remain sheriff if the position had true autonomy? That's a great question. I don't know. Thank you. All right. Uh, 
Councilman Miller. Mr. President, Sheriff Pinckney, uh, thank you very much for uh, your willingness to be with us today and, and answering our questions. And uh, just by uh, way of background, uh, could you com con compare and contrast the roles of the director of public safety, the assistant director of public safety, the sheriff, the jail warden, and the assistant war wardens. I'd like to get a better sense of, of what each of them do and how their roles interact with each other. So I can't accurately speak about the uh, public safety uh, folks in, in, that, in that office. Um, I do know that we work, when, when our paths cross, we do work uh, together with them. In regards to the jail administrator and the warden, uh, their duty and responsibilities are to run the day-to-day -day operations in that correctional facility and um, report up to, which would be my chief deputy, because that's who they would answer to in our organizational chart. And then ultimately it would come up to me and then I would report that up to the, the chief protection officer and report that all the way up to the executive. I, did that answer your question? Partially. Okay. And, and uh, let me follow up with that and, uh, and I'm going to ask a question that... Uh, the prosecutor's office advised uh, was not a good question in the form that it was phrased. So I'm going to I'm going to phrase it differently and and hope to be on target. And if not, the uh, prosecutor's office can say so. But my uh, you were talking about the reporting up. I I would like if if you could. Uh, uh, give me a, a more complete description of what boots you have on the ground to, uh, to be assessing on a day-to-day -day basis what's going on in the jail and, and, and uh, who that information is reported to and how that information is acted upon. So on the day-to-day -day, uh, operations, I... We did not, when I say we, myself and the chief deputy at the time, we did not meet with the uh, jail personnel on a day-to-day -day basis. At least I did not. Maybe the chief did, but I didn't meet on with the uh, jail personnel on a day-to-day -day basis. We would have a bi-weekly meeting as well as a monthly meeting with all of the units within the sheriff's office. And at the, in those meetings, we would discuss any and everything that came up. And so that's how I would be informed. Now, if something happened in between those uh, by weeks, of course, we would have uh, ad hoc meetings where they would come to my office or I would go to their office and we would discuss what happened. Okay. Uh, do you or any of your team make recommendations or suggestions to the judges regarding inmates who might be candidates for early release. And, and uh, well, we'll start with that. I have never uh, made recommendations to my knowledge. I, I don't recall making any recommendations to judges about an early release for an inmate. And, uh, is this something that you could do, or is there some legal or, or procedural impediment why, impediment why this would not be an allowable practice? No, I can't think of anything legal. Um, I do know that there have been instances where we might have an inmate who had a medical issue, um, where the jail staff felt that um, we weren't 
we didn't have the appropriate uh, means to take care of that. And they might have, the jail staff might have met with judges to discuss, A, is there a possibility to have this individual moved or released? But uh, I've never had conversations with judges. And uh, what improvements are we currently working to make at the jail and how are we trying to make them? So uh, I, w I wish I had a list uh, of some of the uh, uh, improvements we made. There have been a ton. I know we've, uh, a lot of the uh, issues were the, the cosmetics of the facility, you know, so we've painted, we've, we've bought uh, new uh, bedding, we've bought new uh, tubs, so the inmates can put their items, their personal items in the tubs instead of storing them on the floor or on a shelf. Um, there, there have been a lot of uh, improvements. Sh new shower curtains. Um, we've addressed um, the, the maintenance issue or and the, the do, do it more frequently now. Uh, so there's a, there's a lot. I can get you a list of all of the improvements we had. Are uh, are there any improvements regarding uh, uh, regarding staffing and training that you're you're uh, working on making? Yes, um, we have uh, met with the administration and the administration is on board with this, and that is to increase uh, the, the manpower on all levels. But uh, in, specifically in corrections, we, have, we now have a new jail administrator. We're getting a warden. We have three associate wardens, possibly getting two additional associate wardens. We're getting eight new uh, uh, lieutenants. We're increasing the sergeant rank as well as the corporal rank and to Councilwoman Simon's uh, point, we're getting a canine for the facility now. Um, in regards to the law enforcement end, I spoke with the uh, administration, they are on board with this too, to increase the command staff for law enforcement because for my entire tenure at the Sheriff's Office, I've only had like right now, currently, I only have two captains and two lieutenants for the entire county. So we are increasing those numbers as well. As soon as we, we're doing a uh, staffing analysis, and when that gets back with that recommendation, I'm going to forward that to the executive as well as to this body. So am I correct that, that, you're, that there are a number of staffing changes that are currently in the works and in and in addition to that, you're currently undergoing a staffing analysis, which might result in further recommendations. Correct. And uh, when is the uh, date you're expecting the uh, staff analysis to be completed? I was hoping to have that completed last week, but uh, I, I don't know. I'll, I don't know when he will be complete. Okay. Okay. What, what best practices would you like to see incorporated into either rehabbing the existing jail or building a new one? In my opinion, my recommendation is to build a new facility. Um, the facility that we have right now is it, it's. The usefulness is, is not there. We don't have the space. Um, we will always be out of compliance with the state just because of the age of that facility and the wear and tear on that facility. So my recommendation moving forward is to build a new facility. So, Mr. President to the Sheriff, assuming that we do build a new facility, what best practices do you think should be incorporated into the way that the new facility is built? I would 
suggest that, um, you know, down in Franklin County, they just, they have built a new facility. I would recommend that we send a, uh, a, a body down there to see what they've done to see if it would benefit us up here. Um, I don't know if I could fully uh, answer that question uh, because I'm not a architect or, or things of that nature, but there are some folks that have done this uh, and there are some best practices out there that we could, instead of trying to create something, we can just reach out to someone that's been there and done it. So that's what be my, that would be my recommendation. Okay. Councilman, could, could we... Um, um, I have just two more questions. Okay, very good. Would that, be, good. Would that good. be acceptable? All right. Okay. Uh, the, uh, the next question is, uh, is whether you uh, feel that we should implement a central booking process that has been previously discussed but seems to have uh, not moved forward. That's a, a good question as well. Uh, I believe, in my opinion, that we sh we should revisit that and have those discussions again. And uh, finally, uh, in the past, we had a process of of uh, sending inmates out to other jails throughout the county to uh, relieve overcrowding. Do you believe we should revert to that process to get our numbers in line? I think what we should do is to try to um, utilize all the space that we have available right now and take advantage of some of the programs we have right now and fully exhaust all that before we look at that. Um, and if we've exhausted everything and we still have that overcrowded issue, then that's something that we should explore. Thank you, Mr. President. All right. Thank you, Councilman Miller, Councilwoman Baker. Thank you, and thank you for being here today. Uh, many questions have, have been asked, and the one I haven't heard yet, though, is regarding the correction officers. Um, there has been an increasing need to hire more, and uh, we have had difficulty um, getting the to hire and even retain additional correction officers. What do you believe is the reason why it's been so difficult to um, bring more correction officers to our jails? I you know, I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know. I know we've um, increased the correction officer pay. Um, we've also held uh, a couple of open houses. We've been to career fairs. We went out and um, partnered with the Army to try to recruit some of their uh, folks that's coming back from service. Um, we've done a lot of things. Um, I don't know why we're not getting the, uh, the, the, I think we get the turnout. It's just that we don't have um, enough qualified folks uh, to, to fill those positions. If I may, in your experience, um, do you think this is an unusual occurrence or are correction officers typically a difficult position to fill? I think it is it's kind of ebbs and flows. You know, there's some some years where we, we find great candidates and and then some years not so much. So there really you can't really help us then with any other factors that could perhaps be um, making it difficult for us to hire those correction officers. Correct. It could be um, the image and law enforcement in the media right now that it's not drawing, uh, it's, it's, and it's not exclusive to, it, not exclusive to Cuyahoga County, excuse me. Um, it's, it's national. Um, when I became a law enforcement officer, it was 700, 800 people taking a test. Now you might have 150. Okay. So. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Baker. Uh, <clears throat> Sheriff Pinkney, um, uh, is it true that uh, the Cuyahoga County uh, officials never conducted an internal investigation into now indicted ex-jail warden uh, Eric Ivey for accusations contained in the U.S. Marshals report? 
Is it true that, you want me to repeat that? Yes, please. Um, is it true that uh, the Cuyahoga County officials never conducted an internal investigation into now indicted ex-jail warden Eric's Ivy for accusations contained in the U.S. Marshal's report? I don't know if uh, the county, uh, like, inter um, excuse me, the inspector general or uh, the prosecutor's office, I don't know if they're conducting a, an investigation, but we've never did an internal. If, if you're talking about the sheriff's office, we've never done an internal investigation. Did on. you ever, Sheriff, did you ever ask uh, the county human resources department to investigate Ivy? Yes, I did. Yes, you did? Yes. Okay. And um, was, to your knowledge, uh, was any investigation, did any investigation ever take place? Did you follow up to... What did you hear later? I, I heard nothing. Uh, no one got back with me. I believe they conducted a, a uh, investigation, but I, I don't know. No one got back with me. Once I turned that over uh, to uh, HR, that's what I did. I left it to them. Okay. Councilwoman, uh, Councilman Gallagher. Sheriff, thanks for being here. Yes. Um, since this new form of government, we've had uh, Sheriff Reed, Sheriff Bova, now Sheriff Pinckney, three lawmen that I respect and that I think most people that are in the law in Cuyahoga County and outside Cuyahoga County respect, and in particular, Sheriff Bova. I found it odd that the Euclid deal went down the way it did, and we can get into that some other time, but that didn't have anything to do with you. You weren't the sheriff, and you've already answered. You had no knowledge of what was going on. I called Sheriff Bova. He was not informed of anything about the, about the Euclid deal. So that leaves a big gap there. Um, Bedford Heights. What, what, did you, what part did you play in Bedford Heights? None. Cleveland? None. Okay. You know, and by statute, the sheriff of the county runs the jails. And we're getting, we're getting answers that tell us somebody else was running the jails. Uh, there's a common denominator involved in all of this, and it's Mr. Mills. And nobody up here that I know can figure out where he came from, how he got to where he got to. He was within an eyelash of becoming the safety director in this county until I had a rather interesting discussion with the executive and guaranteed him no votes on this council moving forward because that was a confirmable position. Then he showed up in the jail. So this guy's magic. This guy's absolute magic. And nothing seems to have followed him. Now, it, this all started, people want to pin this on, not Bova, not Reed, but they want to pin it on Pinckney. And it all started with the sheriff or the marshal's report, which is really not the marshal's report. It's the marshal hired a company to do this report. It's been famously called the marshal's report. But my understanding is it was an outside company that does this throughout the United States. And things happen in that report. Do you agree with everything that was in that report? No. Do you find it interesting that the state of Ohio a month earlier, basically gave you good marks on the things that the, the marshal's report found to be inhuman. I think that would be a subject that would probably better uh, okay. be considered an executive session. Okay, uh, sorry. Um, so the Ohio, the, the state of Ohio's report, month after month after month after month, going back through your administration, the Bova years, the Reed years, and even, even through various other sheriffs. Not glowing reports, but passable reports. My point being, if Reed found this, that would have been stopped. If Bova had been told this, it would have been stopped. Had Pinckney been told this, it would have been stopped. It wasn't stopped because we were dealing with an old facility that's 25 years past its day, no one did anything about that. That's not on you. It's on us and the previous administrations to, to deal with that. And we're dealing with that now. My real concern here is, and it's maybe not even a question to you, that 
we have sheriffs that had no control over the jails. We had sheriffs that had no control over their administrations. We had one sheriff testify of the frustrations that he dealt with. I can only imagine the frustrations that you've dealt with. Would it be fair to say that one of the council people that you talked to privately was me? Yes. Would it be fair to say that the conversations that we had privately numerous times were in dealing with the problems at the jail? Yes. Would it be fair to say that my frustrations and your frustrations met many times and where they met was Mr. Mills? Yes. Yet nothing happened to yes. Mr. Mills. Yes. That's a frustration that, that I'll live with the rest of my life. And I'm sure you will too. Um, the Cleveland deal, and if the numbers were right and they weren't fudged, and now we know they were fudged, we don't even know where they came from. But if the numbers were right, isn't the process of doing a regional jail the right way to go? I believe so, yes. If we had the facilities yes. and the numbers were right, and as this council has always said, we're not in it to make money. We're in it to break even, to alleviate problems with the, with the inner ring and outer ring suburbs and Cleveland with the ultimate goal, getting to central booking. It's the only thing where we have judges on board. I think the administration's on board, the council's on board, the sheriffs have always been on board, going back to Sheriff Reed. We've done that and it's gone nowhere. Do you understand, do you have any reason, understanding why that has gone nowhere? I, I do not know okay. why it hasn't gone anywhere. All right, going to the things that, that we've done in the jail since the Marshall's report. Um, many things have been done, many hours have been spent, and, and justifiably, things had to be fixed. The bringing in of Metro to take over the, the facility in total on medical was something that this council, going back to Reed, and the only reason I got it and that I pushed it is Sheriff Reed was pushing it. Fought that administration, what happened, I don't know, and we didn't get it then. Going back to BOVA, what should we do? We need medical, we need Metro. So this council stayed the course and fought it. If not, for the lucky break of Dr. Boutros being made CEO of Metro, we wouldn't have Metro in there. We wouldn't have it. We're redoing the, uh, we're redoing the food, correct? Yes. Where are we at with that? Um, I just checked with uh, Donna, the fiscal manager, last week, and uh, she said that it's in its final stages, and she was going to give me an update, but she's been off the last couple of days. Okay. So, but according to her, we're in the final steps to getting that done. So on the steps moving forward for a new facility, which the, the debate has ended as far as I'm concerned, I'm one of the 12 policymakers on a new justice center, new jail, indeed, if it's going to be a new justice center or a redo. But we're dealing with a facility that we've been told by the federal marshals from the state of Ohio and from anybody that has eyesight that could look at that jail knows it's got to be replaced. So that is in motion to do. And we are, and I could tell you that on August 7th from 9 to 5 in the, con in the convention center, Room six, we will be live streaming that meeting that will be dealing with these issues. The follow up September 17th in the Global Center from nine to one in room 313, we'll be live streaming and archiving on the, on the county website those meetings. And the reason that we're doing that is we had such a mess with the Juvenile Justice Center. And when we did a paper trying to figure out how it went wrong, Guess who got blamed? The guy that died. Everybody blamed the guy that died. So now they're not going to be able to blame the guy that died, which might be me, unfortunately, if we ever get through this thing. We're going to have a record of how it's done, who's made the decisions, and anybody on council can participate or view it. Anybody in the audience that has, has any interest in where their money is being spent in this county, and from my understanding, might be one of the biggest building expenses or big projects in the state of Ohio. 
and we're going to have to do it. We're going to have to do it right. So we have hired the people to program it, and I have great confidence that they'll be able to do that. So I'm anticipating in less than one year, these decisions will be made. In less than one year, we'll understand where we're going. In less than one year, we should be digging dirt on at minimally a new jail. Up until then, we're going to have to deal with the facility that we have. And you made a correct statement. There's, we're always going to be in violation with the state of Ohio because of the physical facility itself. Now, as far as Euclid and Bedford Heights and the Cleveland issues, what do you think we should do going forward, knowing full well that a new facility, best case scenario, is three to four years out? So, great question. And uh, I, I believe that the look the, the Cleveland jail uh, we, are, we, are, we we took that on so I think the best thing for us to do is to um, look at better ways of doing things there to make sure and, and it's going to take some time because this fresh arrest is is new for Coyote County and so that's going to that's going to take some time and it's going to be some learning curves going on there. But I, I believe that can that that'll work itself out in regards to Bedford Heights facility. Um, we can utilize that better as well. I mean, and what I mean by that is we have a full of staff out there. We have medical personnel out there. We should be able to put more inmates out there at Bedford Heights as opposed to just the healthy of the sickest. You know what I mean? So if we can put more inmates out there, the low level, if that's the case, uh, nonviolent, but be able to utilize that facility better by putting more folks out there. Thank you. Yes. Councilman Stone, Councilman Jones, and Councilwoman uh, Brown and Councilwoman Simon. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, back to Mr. Gallagher's points of view and some of that. In the other 87 counties, the sheriff's run in the jail. Is that, is that correct? Yes. To my knowledge, yes. Okay. Well, yeah. uh, is there any reason why your job would not have allowed you to run the jail when you came on board? The, the way this is set up, it, um, that this form of government is set up, the sheriff reports up. Right. And... Um, and the only thing the sheriff can do is make recommendations up. And it's up to the administration and he or she has the right to take advice from whoever they want to. So, so when, you, when you sat there in that chair being interviewed for this position, did you anticipate you were gonna be running the jail? As the sheriff? I anticipated being the sheriff and, and what all that uh, entailed. Which would have been similar to the other 87 counties? Yes. Running the jail? Yes. Okay. Um, who do you think decided that you wouldn't actually be the one running the jail? I don't know if I can answer it that way because I don't know if someone made a decision as, a, uh, as opposed to just the course of doing things. So I don't know if someone made a decision saying we're not going to let Cliff or Reed or Bova run the jail. I just believe, like I said earlier, um, the administration has a right to um, listen to whoever they want to listen to, it, it, you know, and that's their right. And that's the way this system is set up. But ultimately, somebody's making a decision. Yes. Okay. It, 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 things don't just hopefully drift to the point where we're operating a multi-million dollar facility with lives at stake. Correct. And it just doesn't drift. Hopefully somebody made a decision that you weren't going to be the one to do this job. Whether that's a good decision or a bad decision, hopefully there was a decision made. Not, I didn't mean to insinuate that you shouldn't be doing it. Um, but hopefully it just didn't drift away from you. And it was somebody actually made an affirmative decision one way or the other, whether it's a good decision or a bad decision. Do you know who you believe that would have been? I, I believe that, it, like I said, it, it, I report it up and uh, goes all the way up to the executive. 
Okay, recently you just stated that you've been now involved with doing some analytics of staffing and, and uh, the food service and all the other things that I asked early in the very beginning. You were never asked these same questions uh, before the decision about the Cleveland jails, the Bedford jails, or uh, the Euclid jails. You were not asked about the staffing or the analytics or any of the things that you just said you've been now reporting uh, upline. That's correct. Doesn't that seem strange that before these massive decisions, they would have asked you those questions a year and a half, two years ago, three years ago? I believe that question was asked to um, the previous, and again, it's just my assumption. I believe those questions were asked uh, to the previous jail director whose job was to run the, he was, he was overseeing the jail, but, but not me. And to Mr. Gallagher's question, you said, that one about the Cleveland, you said, we took it on. Those are, I think, the words I actually wrote down. Did we meaning that you made the decision to take it on? No. I didn't when, think so. No. That's, when I said we, I, we meaning uh, Cuyahoga County. Okay. All right. So, um, and Mr. Mills reported directly to who? I. Uh, in, in our structure, he would report to uh, George Taylor, who was the chief deputy. And that person ultimately reported to the county executive? Uh, no, George would report, George to, been, right. report to me. Yeah, okay. Yes. But you had no idea, even though he reported to you indirectly, you had no, uh, you indicated earlier you were not part of the decision to hire. Correct. I, um, Chief Bova and I interviewed uh, Director Mills, but it wasn't an, it was more of a, um, be, be, because we knew Ken Mills, but he was the Director of Public Safety, so it was more of a, not an interview, but a get to know who you are type of interview, not an interview for the job per se, but an interview of who he, who Ken Mills is. So that was our interview. Okay, and ultimately somebody made a decision to hire him, to run a jail system. Yes. And you still don't know who made that decision? Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Councilman. Then we're going to go back to Councilman Jones. Thank you, Mr. President. I want to revisit the, the overcrowding line of questioning I had earlier. You mentioned 1,400 inmates are awaiting trial in the county jail. How many inmates are in the facility in total? I, I don't. I didn't get a chance to hear what the jail count was today, but recently it's been averaging around twenty one hundred, a little over twenty one hundred. What is the highest number you've seen in your tenure? Twenty four hundred. Twenty four hundred. Yeah, twenty four hundred plus. What would you say is the the right size population for the building that we currently have? The facility was designed to hold 1760. 17. We have 1,760. That would be my recommendation that we get to that. 1,760. Yes. And we are now currently at about 2,100. Yes, sir. Okay. I asked the question earlier, what can the county do to, to help with the overcrowding? Um, and in, in the course of that question or the other questions, you made the comment about a mental health facility. Uh, I do still follow up. I want to know what you think that number or who you can contact to get mm -hmm. the number of individuals who have mental health issues. It's, it's just my belief that if we had a mental health facility and, and we redirected those individuals, actually to not even come to the jail, but were directed to the mental health facility, we would immediately right size the population. Uh, I, I wait on your number. I've heard things from 500 to 700 um, or higher. So I would like to get a, a concrete number from a professional. Um, but if, if any th of those numbers are anywhere close to being right, that brings us well under 1700 just by serving the mental health component. Would you agree? Yes. There is an argument between the pre-booking, as I, I would advocate, 
where where police officers will obviously direct a person to a mental health facility as opposed to uh, to the county jail. Then there's a conversation around post booking. What do you have an opinion, a professional opinion, as which one is superior? No, I don't have an opinion on which one's superior. I think they both serve will serve the same purpose. Um, but I would su suggest that if um, there is a way to pre prevent them from even coming into the facility, be the better choice. It's pre booking. Yeah. So. And you say you like pre booking. <laughs> is that what you're saying? Again, like I said, I, as long as we can get them the the help they need, however that comes, that should be the the end game. So, okay. All right. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Councilman. Councilwoman Brown. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through the chair, and thank you, uh, Sheriff, for coming today. Um, one of the things that was mentioned in the report was the the doors. There was an issue with the doors that didn't lock. Was that accurate? Yes, the, uh, the, my recollection was there were a couple of doors that uh, didn't either lock or stay secured. And so as soon as we were made aware of that, we put in our work order with Public Works. And to Public Works uh, credit, they came and put us first on list and, and addressed those locks immediately. Okay, so those are, would also be included in your list of improvements? Made yes. The facility? yes. Okay. Um, do you believe that the county jail would be better off if we had deputies um, in the jail versus corrections officers? No, not really. Uh, correction officers, uh, you know, contrary to what was being, you know, played out now, they, those folks are very professional. They get specialized training in corrections, um, whereas deputies, they don't necessarily get the, that, that training. They're just law enforcement officers. So uh, correction officers are Fine. Okay, and then um, as it relates, we talked. A, you, you mentioned you report up. Can you just, for um, point of clarification, give us an organizational chart of the reporting up? How you, where you fit into that equation? So from you, you report to, and so on and so forth. Yes. So um, the the way my reporting structure went, I would report to the chief protection officer, which I put it in the, uh, the safety director term, which at, the, uh, at one time it was Frank Bova, now it's uh, Chief Carney. Um, and then from there, um, I would, after I met with the chief, we would go up to meet with the uh, chief of staff. At one point it was uh, Ms. Jordan, Sobel Jordan. Then it was uh, Earl Lycan, uh Mayor Lycan, and in the interim, it was Matt Carroll, and now is uh, uh, Chief of Staff Mason. And then from there, up to the executive. Okay, and then if you could uh, change that organizational structure, what would you recommend? What would be the ideal structure for your authority or your position? I think, in my opinion, the sheriff, he or she should be able to make the decision and that's that. Instead of having to report up to the chief protection officer, the chief of staff, the sheriff should be able to make his, his or her decision and that's that. Okay, and then what, what brought us here was uh, clearly tragic situations relative to, uh, to suicides and overdose. Can you just speak to what improvements or was there anything that we could do um, that we could have done better to prevent some of those from occurring? So I'm going to start off by saying... I think this does touch on uh, issues concerning pending litigation that could be better addressed in executive session. I withdraw the question now. Okay. Um, thank you, Councilwoman, and uh, I believe uh, Councilwoman Simon is up again. Thank you. Um, at what point did you find out that there was a recommendation that the capacity at the Euclid Jail was less than the 80-some beds down at 32? When did you learn of that? 
Just recently. Just recently? Yes. So you uh, had... I would probably say whenever it was discussed a couple of weeks ago. Okay. I heard um, my colleagues characterize your position as a sheriff that one of being that you could not run the jail, that other people were making decisions for you and that you couldn't make decisions for the best interest of the jail. Is that your position? I would, my position is, in, in my position as a sheriff, the only thing I could do is make recommendations. And if you felt those recommendations were not um, carried out to how you wanted them carried out, did there come a time when you felt it would it be necessary to tell this council? Well, I did have, uh, as this council knows, I did have conversations with members, uh, at least two members of council. We had public meetings, um, uh, justice committee meetings, uh, under the um, leadership of Councilman Gallagher, his committee, safety committee meetings. At any time, did you come forward to indicate that your recommendations were not being followed, and that you had a concern about that? Not in the um, not in the council meetings, because, like I said earlier, um, the executive has the right to listen and take recommendations from who he, who he or she wants to t take the recommendations from. That's his his right. Were there times that your recommendations were followed by the chain of command? Yes. And I, I wanted to ask you why um, it took you several days to read the Marshall Report when it came out. I, I want to refresh your recollection that it came out um, a day prior to when you came to testify for the first time at the, at the Safety Committee. And I asked you, had you read the report? I assumed you had read it. You're the sheriff and expected you to report back to, to us what you found and what you thought. And when you came in, you said that you hadn't read it. I, I recall that maybe you're out of town. And as sheriff, um, I'm wondering why you didn't make that a priority to, to take a look at that report and be ready to answer questions about it that should have been expected. Well, uh, I was not out of town. I was in town. But when the report came in, it didn't come to me. The report went to the executive, so I did not get the report. So by the time I came to council, I had just had the report maybe a day or two before I came to council, and at that time we had a lot of things going on. We were going to, to uh, Cleveland.com and uh, having meetings about it, so I didn't get a chance to fully, at that time, um, digest that report because I didn't get it. It didn't come to me. As sheriff, don't let me ask you: Did you request a copy of that report immediately upon which you learned that it was issued? Yes, I initially thought that the report was going to come to me uh, because that the marshal stated that he believes when that group was done that the report was going to come to me. That's what it looked like on their paperwork, but the report went to the marshal, and the marshal sent the report to the executive. And why didn't you ask for a copy of that report, either from the executive or from the marshal, directly? Well, once I was made aware the report came out, I did that. We were made aware of the report days before you came to testify. This council knew I knew there was a report issued at least five days before. So it... Mm. It was. Well, you get you got the information before I did. I don't think so, but that's okay. We can go back and look. I was just curious why that wouldn't be a, a priority for you as sheriff to understand what what was issued in that report uh, when everybody else had known it was issued, especially when you came to testify. Mr. President, Councilwoman, uh, we believe we have Councilwoman uh, Councilman. Uh, Miller has some, uh, some additional questions, but because Councilman Tuma has not had an opportunity, I'm gonna to go to him right now. Councilman, then to you. I appreciate that, um, Mr. President. And through the chair uh, to the sheriff. Um, so it, we've talked quite a bit about organizational structure, and it appears from your, your discussion that you think that the, the structure may not be the best way to handle the sheriff's office. Is that cor a correct statement? Yes. Okay, so if I asked you who you reported directly to, 
Would it be Ms. Carney? Would it be the current chief of staff? Or would it be the county executive? It would be it, my direct uh, would be right now currently Chief Carney. OK, so were there occasions where if you if you if you saw um, uh, procedure or, or uh, operations weren't going the way that you had hoped where you just skipped Miss Carney went directly and had conversations with the, the chief executive, county executive? Yes. Okay. Um, when was the last time you had a conversation with the county executive? In general or about a uh, topic or? Uh, uh, about, about jail operations. Maybe two weeks ago. Okay. Um, is your, was your biggest concern regarding the, the um, structure, if you will, the, the hierarchy here, was, was your biggest concern that things were not being done properly at the jail, or if you had any disagreements, there would be repercussions? No, I don't. I, my, my concerns were the stuff that I saw and stuff that I was receiving that it, stuff wasn't being done properly. That was what I was relaying to, you know, Councilman Gallagher, Chief Bova, Chief Carney, those type of things. Okay. And, and am I'm hearing you correctly, my colleagues are hearing you correctly, that you think that the way it's currently set up, the office of the sheriff needs greater autonomy. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, I have nothing further. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Miller. Mr. Pre President, to Sheriff Pinckney, to follow up on our, our earlier discussion, you said that it was, it was not uh, current practice to get daily information from, from staff that, that there were monthly or, or biweekly meetings. Uh, my question is uh, whether you would uh, recommend that going forward there be some process for getting daily information, whether it be by meetings or whether it be by some other process of communication. I, b I believe the structure that we have set up biweekly and uh, then monthly with the entire sheriff's office worked. It's, um, and, and when things came up, um, if it came up be, be between the biweekly meetings, there was always an opportunity to bring that forward. And I think that works. Um, it just has to be, um, the folks in that system have to respect that process. And, and Mr. Chairman, to the sheriff, when, when you say biweekly, did you mean twice a week or once every other week? I'm sorry, uh, once every other week. Okay. And uh, is there any process in place where, uh, where, you, where you or where you or, or you could, through your staff, receive information directly up from corrections officers, or was all your information based on uh, observations by staff who were higher up the chain of command than corrections officers? No, there's always a process. If someone, I would walk through the jail. Um, if someone needed to see me, they can come see me, or they can go see uh, Chief Taylor. Um, they, there, there's always a process that if someone needed to have time with me, it, it was available. And uh, finally, Mr. President, to the sheriff, uh, in an organization of more than 5,000 people, you can't have the county executive making all the decisions. Uh, my question is, uh, even though you would have to report up to the chain of command and, and, and tell people wh what you were doing, were there some decisions that, that you could assess, make a decision, and implement, even though it would, could be subject to review, but that you could implement? Or, or was it the case that uh, 
that you couldn't do anything without it being recommended and and approved by by the higher ups in the chain of command before you did anything. No, that's a great question. No, there were some decisions that you have to make right now. Um, that's just the nature of this business in, in our profession. You have to make um, decisions right now and then just live with the decisions you made, good, bad, or indifferent. Um, and those decisions were made. And, and a, a, let, me, let, me, uh, let me clarify this too. A, a lot of decisions that did go up the chain were, uh, or, or excuse me, recommendations that did go up were um, accepted and approved. And um, it was just major decisions is what I'm really speaking about, that we would run it up the chain. Okay, thank you. Councilman Conwell. Uh, through the chair to the sheriff, are there any structural IT modifications that structural IT modifications that still uh, remain to be completed by the county related to the metro transition? Oh, I don't. I don't know. Who would know that? Would that be a question for Director Carney? That that might be a question for Director Carney or someone from uh, Metro or IT. Okay. Um, what is the status of completing the construction rehab of the Cleveland Jail um, space, and what is the status of completing the rehab of the old jail kitchen? So, so the Cleveland Jail space, I don't know what the status is on that, uh, but the kitchen space is nearly complete. Um, I just met with and spoke with the new jail administrator yesterday, and uh, she informed me that that is almost complete. Do we know uh, a date of that completion, projected it, date? No. No, I don't have that. And since you don't know um, the Cleveland jail space, who, who would I ask uh, in regards to the construction and rehab of the Cleveland jail space? Is that public works or... You might yeah run that one by Public Works and maybe even Chief Carney might be able to uh, enlighten you on that. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, uh, Councilwoman Stevens. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. What do you think originally? I know what we heard in the media. What do you think triggered the evaluation by the marshals and the tone that they set with the first? Evaluation in the the, the Marshall report. Yes, yeah, um, I believe uh, the executive uh, asked the marshal service to come in and look at and see if they can assess why all these suicides were taking place, and I believe that's what uh, brought them into the facility. Was the executive? Were you aware that they would have um, a negative opinion of some of the things that they were about to see? No. Um, if you were, suppose we fast forward and you've retired and you're a consultant and you're making recommendations on a facility such as ours and our operations, what would be the top three things you would say we should do? It, great question. In the current facility, the three top things would be the three issues I see is staffing, the overcrowdedness in, the, uh, in that facility, that age and structure of that facility. And how long would you think it would take to solve any of these problems? I don't, I don't know. It's hard to say because the overcrowdedness, that's something that um, is, no matter what sheriff you have, it doesn't control that. Uh, staffing is... Staffing can be controlled by... No, I said the overcrowding. Okay. Yeah. And staffing, you know, we're working on that, trying to uh, recruit and, and retain staff and bring more staff on. And the uh, building, the space... It is what it is. Uh, so let's go to the problem that a sheriff could potentially solve. How do you re um, attract and retain more sheriffs in today's, more deputies and COs in today's um, marketplace? 
You, you ask me, I'm sorry, do you ask me how, how do, do, how do we do it? attract and retain. Uh, like, like I, I'm sorry, that's a great question. Like I, like I stated earlier, we, we're, we're trying to do that. Um, we, we're having open houses. Um, we've uh, done some recruiting. We go to career fairs. Um, we've increased the correction officer pay. Um, we've partnered, and we've already, we've done this historically. We partner with the military services, so folks that are coming back from service. Um, so we're, we're trying to uh, recruit and do the best we can in getting folks in. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mm -hmm. Chair. Okay. Councilman Conwell. Um, through the chair, uh, to um, the sheriff, in interviewing um, high-ranking officials that will be up under you, chiefs and things of that nature, do you feel that you should have um, being on those interviews and being able to make a decision in terms of the, the staff that will work under you. And currently, I believe HR does that. Yes, you're correct. And, and I do believe that uh, the sheriff should partake in those interviews. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Councilman Baker. Just to follow up to Councilmember Stevens' question, um, you listed three top recommendations, especially for a county government as we have here, of staffing overcrowdedness and age of facility. But you didn't say anything about what I thought was the biggest hurdle for you, and that is the autonomy and inclusion of big decisions. That I would think would be at the top of your list if you were to say tomorrow to anyone that is creating, especially in this form of government, what is important, and that is to be able to be included in any decision, especially those that are large uh, decisions that need to be made for the betterment of the jail. Is there a reason why you didn't include that? Well, because I took the question from the councilwoman as to the jail per se. So I answered it that way. Absolutely, uh, autonomy is paramount. Absolutely. Sure not only autonomy, but also the inclusion of you being involved in any discussions of different jails, reconstruction, just big issues that perhaps are on your plate and should be involved in as you would probably have to administer it. Absolutely. Okay, just wanted to make sure we had yeah. that clear. Okay, Councilman Brown, I think indicated uh Thank you, Mr. Chair. We, uh, Councilwoman Stevens mentioned the attract and retention, but the, the, as far as correction, corrections officers go. Um, do outside of HR's exit interviews, when these individuals resign, because it seems like it's a high turnover, do they give you any indication of why they're leaving? Uh, those exit interviews are done with HR, so you would have to ask them. So, does anyone within the jail ex, uh, exchange any information that might give you some insight as to why there is a high turnover outside of the exit interview? No, not, not outside the exit interview. Uh, just by me being there so long, right. I mean, you have folks that are just don't like the job anymore. They didn't think it was what they thought it was going to be. Um, historically, it was pay sometimes it could have been issues with the pay some folks left with, uh, because they had other job opportunities uh, some folks just didn't like the the job some folks were um, uh, didn't like the the uh, staff you know um, there's a multitude of reasons why folks are leaving but I never again like I said that's just word of mouth stuff that you hear you know, right. throughout the years because from where we sit, uh, oftentimes it was uh, it was pay and then lack of training is what we we were hearing. And so I understand that there are some steps that have been taken to improve the training mechanism. Mm -hmm. But I I just wonder it, le it begs the question: Does the job um, demand exceed their expectations? Is it much more than they anticipated coming in, and that causes them to leave sooner than maybe they would on any other job, even with the pay? I, th I think in some cases, you know, it's it's a that's a, a very difficult um, job, and some for some folks, 
being in a facility, um, whatever their shift is, eight hours a day, 10 hours a day, 12 hours a day, um, where you have no, no sunlight or no relief, it, uh, it, can, it can be challenging for some folks. Um, and my, my last question is, what are your thoughts on the state of Ohio coming in every 30 days to inspect the jail? Uh, yeah, I think that was asked earlier. Okay. Uh, yeah, it, I, I don't care. Yeah, it, 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 it could be a good thing. It doesn't, doesn't intimidate me or anybody at the county jail. I, get, I have one more question, in, uh, Chairman. Given the fact that they have given you good reports versus what was reported in the marshal's reports, I guess I'm unclear as to what benefits might come from that. Can you maybe speak to that? Could you rephrase that, please? <laughs> um, with them coming in every 30 days to inspect, what it, do you know what their goals are? No. Uh, no. Okay, no. thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, I believe Councilwoman Simon like to sure, thank you. Um, mm -hmm. Other counties and, and large cities have jail commissions that are set up and established that are comprised of um, people with experience in jails and even some inmates that former inmates or prisoners are, are part of that um, constituted body to oversee or be a place to which reports can be reported of complaints that would oversee and be able to um, inform council and or inform the executive. Do you think that would be um, a prudent move for this council to consider? I think it'd be something that you, sh you should discuss and look into. Yeah. Are you familiar with any of these bodies? One, for example, I think is in Cook County, New York. Um, these are being set up to to actually address situations that we have seen in the last um, year. I, I did hear about the one in Cook County, but I'm not familiar with the workings of it. Okay. Yeah, but Thank I did you. hear about it in Cook County. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Um, are there any further questions or comments? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Councilman Jones. It's gone around the circles here a little bit. Go ahead. Uh, in regards, uh, in in my earlier question, I asked about uh, the number, the population, and uh, those coming in. And you you mentioned that by the law, you must accept those that come in. So this obviously comes from the judges. This makes me, the judges are the ones who determine who comes into the jail. Uh, one of our sheriffs in a previous committee meeting. I mentioned um, that they sometimes they do a little bit with offline, reach out to judges and you know have conversations around the, the size of the population and what they could do to help. Uh, can you speak to what some of the tools that they might have? Uh, we, we mentioned the ankle braces as one. Are there other tools that you know that the judges have that can help mo 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 moderate the? the population size. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't, I can't speak to what tools the judges have, but I can let you know that uh, the, the judges, the prosecutor's office, everyone uh, that touches this are trying to work together to see what, what we can do to reduce the population. I know the courts have hired a, like a liaison um, between the courts and, and they work with our, the jail staff to monitor the, uh, the number of inmates. And, uh, and when it, once it hits this 2,100, 2,200 threshold, that liaison, to my understanding, reports back to the court and have each uh, judge look at their docket to see if there's someone that they can move forward in the process. That's my understanding. But the, but the courts are trying to work um, with reducing the population. Okay. Hmm. Um, do you have peer sheriffs that have uh, mental health facilities in their communities and, uh, and the impact they have on the jail population? 
those communities that have a mental health facility, are you familiar with any? I'm not familiar with any, uh, but I do know with a lot of the sheriffs I speak through, speak with throughout Coyote, I mean, throughout the state of Ohio, as well as nationally, uh, they're experiencing the same thing. Um, and and uh, they're, they're working through the same things that we're working through in, in regards to the mental illness and the addictions uh, that are in their facilities. Okay, I've had record. There have been a few who said that they've had mental health facilities that have had a positive impact mm -hmm. on keeping down population. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and again, I think it will impact many things. The side, if, if there's a new facility, how big do you build it? Mm -hmm. Do we really address what needs to be addressed first and, and know that when it comes time to build? Do we build bigger or do we build right size based on the things that we can do before that time comes? My understanding is that the executive is working on that right now. Uh, he's meeting with the, um, the mental health court uh, judges, uh, the Adams board, um, Everyone that will touch these individuals and they are uh, the prosecutor's office, they're working on that right now. But I don't so have any information of where they are and, and those type of things, but they are working that now. Is there any county council representation at this table you're referring to? Not to my knowledge. Okay. But they're, they're early, again. Don't know. I believe they're in early discussions. Nothing's formalized yet. I, I anticipate that that will happen when they start making some headway. But uh, I but do. Said, I'm sorry. You said there is a table. Yeah, but but that's my understanding that they are trying to start these discussions. And to my knowledge, I don't think anyone from council is there. I always say, if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. Right. And so. Yeah. If there is a table, I think there should be representation from this body. We play a small part in all of this. So Yes. I, I like to, uh, Chief of Staff, could you make sure our Chief of Staff knows? I'm sure he knows already. <laughs> but just let him know, I think we should at least have some inquiries around this body having some level of input at that table. Just a quick question, um, Sheriff Pinckney, in your opinion, should you be at those meetings or any sheriff in your position be at those meetings if they're talking about the beginning process of what that jail should or shouldn't look like? Yes. Yeah. Councilman Gallagher. Sheriff, I think it, 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 people get confused. The sheriff doesn't put people in jail. You just hold them there for the people that do put them in jail. So uh, my last question to you is uh, hypothetical, but I think you can answer it. If uh, Cliff Pink needs a duly elected Sheriff of Cuyahoga County, does Ken Mills have a job running the jail? No. Thank you. All right, well, that seems like a good uh, place to uh, stop today. Uh, thank you, Council. Uh, thank you, Sheriff, uh, for being here today and being very forthcoming. and. And uh, we've had uh, really quite a few questions asked and answered. I want to thank the prosecutor's office for also being here. Uh, I wanted to ask you uh, just uh, from what I understand, and make sure this is true, that if the council would decide to have uh, more questioning done in executive session, uh, that you uh, and your attorney would be willing to participate in that. Absolutely, Mr. Brady, and we'd like to say thank you to the council for working through this unique situation for the sheriff. You know, he's been pulled at all sides here. He has multiple uh, feelings of obligation. You have ongoing criminal investigations. He doesn't want to mess those up, and he's been told this could do that. He's told by the county we have ongoing litigation. He doesn't want to impact those negatively. And at all times, he has the obligation to this council. That's why he's always been prepared to speak to this council. And we both greatly appreciate your ability to work with the prosecutor's office to work out the potential for executive session for other questions you may have. And I assure you that both um, Sheriff Pickney and I will make ourselves available even after Friday when he resigns from office. I'll retire. 
after he retires from office. <laughs> okay. Well, we, uh, we certainly um, appreciate that, and I am aware of the fact that um, uh, even up until today, there were other voices that were uh, uh, recommending to the sheriff that in spite of the subpoena, in spite of um, his uh, legal duty to be here, that he not do that. And um, that's kind of astonishing to me. I want the, uh, the public to know that Sheriff Pinckney did not need a subpoena. He was willing to be here at any time that this council called for him. That's good to know. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, so um, in terms of miscellaneous business, uh, I think one thing we've certainly seen is that we've had a, a preview uh, probably of the confirmation hearing of the, of the next sheriff. Uh, and uh, there have been an awful lot of questions that have uh, revolved around autonomy. Uh, and uh, certainly the last week the council uh, placed on the ballot a charter amendment that we hope will give the uh, sheriff uh, more autonomy uh, because that seems to be one of the more one of the underlying themes in spite of all the difficult problems regardless of how the sheriff comes into their position. Councilman Baker, you have something? Under miscellaneous business. Oh, sure. Ready? Yes. Uh, I just want to make sure the uh, council members that are members of the county operations intergovernmental relations know that there will be a committee meeting at three o'clock. Um, we are going to be getting an update from the inspector general since his last semi-annual report. Should be an interesting meeting and I certainly hope that you'll be able to join us. All right, uh, let me just say uh, finally that um, uh, there were uh, a longer list of questions that um, were vetted by the prosecutor's office and. Uh, they asked that those questions, uh, you know, probably not be asked. Um, I think things went well today. Um, <clears throat> I think a further discussion uh, is in order, but I'm going to canvass the, the council members and see how they feel about it. But tentatively, and only tentatively, I would like you to cons look at the, your schedule for the 13th of August, uh, uh, Tuesday, 13th of August, uh, 1 o'clock, for a, possibly an executive session where we can uh, go in, uh, if we can coordinate everybody at that particular time, of course, uh, uh, for, to have some of the discussions that uh, we would like to hear some answers to. Is there anything further? All right. This, this uh, proceeding is adjourned.